Hi, welcome back to Speaking Life. I'm here with uh, Brittany. She uh, prefers that we call her B. So, so B, uh, how old are you? I'm 31. Okay. You from Tucson? Um, I'm from Payson, actually. Payson? Yeah. It's in Arizona? Yeah, Payson, Arizona. Up by Flagstaff. Okay, and how long have you been in Tucson? Uh, for five years now. After I got out of prison in Mexico, I got sent here in order instead of going back home. In Mexico, right? You were in prison for how long? About a year and a half. And do you want to tell us what what got you caught up? To... Uh, trafficking arms. Trafficking arms. And you said how long were you in there? A year and a half. Mm-hmm. And they extradited me to the extradite, United States. That's what it's called. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, how was it in prison over there? It was rough. It shows you like a new way to appreciate life and appreciate the little things that we have that we don't really, we don't really seem to appreciate, like the running water and toilet paper and stuff that we just take for granted on a daily basis. So actually it made it a lot easier to live out here and to be able to be okay out here. It made it like somewhat like it leveled out for me, so I wasn't so lost and like didn't know what to do. <laughs> so right. it was a lot better to be out here. So uh, where in Mexico was that? Mm, I was in Hermosillo, Sonora. Okay. Yeah. So uh, what is your situation right now? Well, right now we've been out here for about six months what do you mean out here out here in the wash in the wash oh okay so this is where you this is basically home right and this is home this is pretty much uh, the only place that we have to go right now and I'm out here with my aunt all right so you were saying you're out here with your aunt yeah I'm out here with my aunt and we both live out here at the moment and we don't have jobs right now so this is what we do this is where we stay when's the last time you had a job I I haven't really ever had a job but um, on paper never but you know doing little side jobs we get them every now and again but it seems to just be a lot easier just to do the little hustles on a day-to-day basis like we do instead of carrying like a real job with real like responsibilities so you and your aunt became homeless at the same time um yes all right so uh to to survive you know you gotta eat and uh it's mainly to support our habit okay now you got a habit what's that habit uh, i smoke blues you're on the blues huh? how long have you been smoking those for about a year now and your aunt smokes them too um she does have you ever overdosed on them no i have not has uh your aunt no anybody you know um yes were you with them when it happened uh yeah me and my uncle actually had to give cpr to some guy who overdosed not too long ago and he stayed like mentally retarded for yeah for the rest of his life now but he's in jail he'll be in jail for until he's like 81 when you say mentally retarded you mean like he stayed on the trip or he just no it just the stroke that the stroke that hit him when he overdosed like kept him like messed him up that bad to where he's gonna be mentally ill for the rest of his life and how did you get turned on to the blues? Um, when just the heroin wasn't cutting it, it wasn't as good as it was when it first came out. So to, just to try to get the same fix as heroin did, we hit the blue and we never turned back. Right, so you used to do heroin, huh? So I've heard, yeah, the same same story. A lot of people were on heroin and they, and they started using the blues because, of course, it is stronger, no? Yes. But uh, you never know what you're getting, though. No, you don't. Like every hit you take is like Russian roulette. You don't know if you're gonna overdose or not. It's something that you're just you take a risk every single time you hit the foil. Okay. What about your mom and your dad? Are they still around? Um, my my dad isn't. Um, my mom she is. She lives in Payson. Does she know your situation? 
Um, she does. I just choose not to talk to them. I haven't talked to them in about ever since I became homeless. I really just took myself away from all them, all my family, basically. Now, do you have brothers and sisters? I do. Are they younger or older? They're younger. I'm the oldest. And my you say you were how old? Thirty-one. Thirty-one. Now, do any of them use any kind of drugs? No. No, they don't, or you don't know? No, they don't use no drugs. I mean, marijuana, but it's technically not a drug anymore. <laughs> it's not a drug, okay. Yeah. Now, do you have uh, any desires to get clean? Um, I do. But I guess when I feel that, you know, I have to, because as of right now, my kid's grandpa, I have five kids, so my kid's grandpa has custody at the moment for them. I did just get approved to Section 8 housing, so once my application goes through and I get that, then that's that's pretty much I'll get clean for my kids and for that, to keep that going. That's a good reason to get clean for your kids now. Uh, what is it about the blues? Uh, do you Is it that you like the high or that you can't deal with the withdrawals that you're not trying to get off of them now? In the beginning, it was the high. There was no high like it. I mean, you're completely 120% numb. There's nothing, there's nothing that, you don't feel nothing. So the high, it's the best high that you can possibly get. Um, but the withdrawals is just the same, just as it is a great high, it's the most worst withdrawals that I've ever experienced. And I've smoked crack and G and everything. And it's the very, very worst. Like your body literally feels like it's getting torn apart. <laughs> and so, you still got to remember to breathe. <laughs> right. On, on the, uh, when you were doing crack, you said meth? Mm hmm Did you, uh, were you homeless at that time? Um, I was. And was it because of the drug? Um, those are just drugs that I just tried, like just one to two nights. I never got really stuck on them. They're just things that you try and you will get a withdrawal from, but the withdrawal from the blues, it's like no other. It's no joke. What advice can you give any of these youngsters out here that, that are wanting to experiment with the blues? Um, the best advice that I can give them is think once, twice, even three times before you try the blue, because it will be a drug that it'll it will change your life in a lot of different ways than you would ever expect or imagine and it's probably not for the best it'll be for the worst and to stop it it's gonna be even 10 times harder so there's no benefits to it there's nothing beneficial it's exactly what prison's like a waste of time but hey like you know you gotta live with it you gotta learn to live with it and just have the willpower to change it when you when you feel you're ready Okay. Now, where do you see yourself six to ten months from now? Six to ten months from now, I am hope I'm clean and I'm hoping I'm in the home with my kids and that I can live the forever, forever American dream, you know, of being a, a mom with children. <laughs> now, have you ever been married? No, I have not. I have five kids with the same father. Um, my only boyfriend so I mean we had a 13 year relationship that ended and I think that's what kind of led me into the drugs I'm not making it you know an excuse but it's something that hurt a lot so you know I dealt with it the best I could and did you tell me already where your kids are they're with their grandfather grandfather and that's in was this at Payson no they're in Maricopa City Maricopa City Okay. Now, uh, do you mind if I pray for you? No, that's fine. Oh, wait, one more question before that. Do you mind if I put this on YouTube? Yeah, that's fine. All right, let's pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, I lift up Q to you in prayer right now, Father God. We ask you that you break the chains of bondage of the enemy, of drug addiction, of uh, confusion, of doubt, of hopelessness, of anxiety and depression. Lord, we bind it up and send it back to the pit of hell, Father God. Lord, we ask you that you get a hold of her, Lord, and shape her with purpose, Lord. Let her know that she matters and that she is loved, Father God. Restore her, redeem her, and set her free from the addiction that she's going through, Father God. And we ask you 
because we know you are mighty and that you are able. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.